So I received a comment on my video last night from um, Stephanie Haskell, Rainer Haskell. And she wrote to me, uh, this prisoner in Maine correctional facility being tortured and strapped to a chair, video link in the article, I'm attaching it. She wrote a few other things. There's a few vulgarities. But this is basically the story of what happened. Um, shocking video from Maine prison shows a restrained prisoner being tortured with pepper spray. Pepper spray this time. And I'll show you the video in a second. But let's just go through this article and see what happened. Because it didn't happen to just one person in Maine. It happened to, by my count, I don't know, five or six people that I found. Because after she sent me this article, I did a bunch of research. And I found that there were at least five or six people in different various prisons across Maine that... Um, um, were tortured with pepper spray. Pepper spray. Um, anyway, you're never going to win. Bottom line is the house wins every time. I actually said a saying in one of my first videos about Maine corruption. Um, actually, it was. It was my first video that I ever posted right after they denied my PI license the first time. I said, when you win or lose, win or lose, when you go up against the Maine State Police, you always lose. And that's so true. That's what Maine Correctional Center Captain Sean Welch said to a prisoner who was strapped in a restraint chair, his face coated with pepper spray and his legs shaking in pain and fear. The entire ordeal was captured in a disturbing video that recently hit the internet after Captain Welch pepper sprayed prisoner Paul Schossler in the face. Captain Welch ignored Schossler's plea that he could not breathe. Does that sound familiar? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. At one point, Captain Welch responds to Schossler's pleas for help with the taunt. Last I heard, I was as useless as beep on a bull. How in the world did this come about? So obviously he was yelling taunts at the captain and the guards. Oh, and... I'm just going to go on here. This whole, th this whole thing is making me so upset and emotional. A former military medic, Paul, Sosh, he's a military medic, has received treatment in prison for both bipolar disorder and depression. So he's mentally ill. And after being held in solitary confinement for two months, he began to cut himself, a common response to such long-term isolation. On June 7, 2012, Sosler pulled off his bandages and refused to be treated. He was then strapped to a restraint chair and confronted by Captain Welch. In the video, we see Soschler immobilized in the restraint chair and surrounded by officers in riot gear. One prisoner surrounded by a whole bunch of officers in riot gear. Luckily, it was being filmed, and um, we learned last night that that's pretty much the standard procedure is to properly restrain somebody. You get a whole bunch of guards in there, you film it, and uh, so... The fact that there were lots of guards there doesn't really bother me that much, but the fact that the Captain Welch sprayed him with pepper spray when he was already restrained and couldn't even move, and if he tried moving, there was five guys there to pounce on him, that's disturbing. In the video, we see Slosher immobilized in the restraint chair and surrounded by officers in riot gear. Slosher remains compliant until one of the officers pins Slosher's head to the back of the chair. Sasha responds by squirming and then spitting at the officer. Without warning, Captain Welch suddenly coats Sasha's face at close range with pepper spray from a canister only intended to be used on large crowds from a distance of 20 feet or more. So you got that? He's really close and he sprays him with this massively powerful can of pepper spray. Massively powerful. Really close. So the pepper spray goes way up his nose, way up into his face, into his mouth, on his eyes, everywhere. Um, Sasha chokes and fights for breath. He pleads, I can't breathe, Captain. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Does that sound familiar? Slosher chokes and fights for breath. He pleads, I can't breathe, but Welch does nothing. Instead of following acceptable professional standards and rinsing away the liquid, which he wouldn't have even have been able to get it all because it's up in his nose, it's in his eyes, it's everywhere because of the high power canister he used. Slosher chokes and fights for breath. He's, I'm going to read it again. He says, I can't breathe. 
but Welch does nothing. Instead of following acceptable professional standards and rinsing away the liquid, um, Slosher, uh, Welch puts uh, a spit hood on Slosher, effectively trapping the prepper. <laughs> he puts a spit hood on him, effectively trapping the pepper spray against the man's face for over 20 minutes. Welch, with canister in hand, paces in, in and out in the small area where Sloshler is being restrained and refuses to let him wash the burning spray from his face and eyes. Sadly, this is one of many examples of corrections staff abusing restraints and pepper spray, at times with deadly results. I mean, just think about that. That's not restraining a prisoner. That's not anything to do with corrections. That is straight up torture. Straight up torture. And the captain who deployed that pepper spray, the all the other officers that were in that room, they should have refocused their energy from the prisoner who was already restrained and tied down to the captain at that point. They should have jumped on the captain and said, what are you doing, captain? In the opening credit, you saw my um, notebook that says, good cops don't defend bad cops. Well, the good cop would have said, hold on, captain, don't spray. Let's wash his face off. There were five of them in there. None of them said that. Sadly, this is one of many examples of correction staff abusing restraints and pepper spray, at times with deadly results. Nick Christie died in 2006 after being pepper sprayed 12 times and spending six hours naked in a restraining chair. There, too, guards placed a spit hood over Mr. Christie, ensuring that he would breathe the liquid as long as he wore it. That's straight-up torture. I mean, possibly even... Um, well, in this case, the guy died. He died. So what they did to Sloshler was attempted murder because he could have died by what they did to him. The case was later ruled a homicide. If Sloshler had have died, it would have been ruled a homicide. Um, Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Apio discontinued the use of restraint chairs in 2006 after three wrongful death lawsuits. Jesse Lee Williams Jr. was restrained when guards sprayed an entire can of pepper spray into a hood before putting it over his mouth as part of a savage beating. He died two days later. Openness and accountability are two of the strongest bulwarks protecting prisoners from abuse. There is this is true whether the abuse occur occurs in a matter of minutes, such as when Arizona guards beat, tased, stripped, and left Marty Asento to die in a cell, or days like when Michigan guards strapped Timothy so um, Sauters to a cement slab until he died of hypothermia and dehydration. Unfortunately, instead of promoting openness and accountability, the main Department of Corrections has closed ranks to protect one of its own. Corrections Commissioner Joseph Ponte ignored the recommendation to fire Welch despite an internal investigation which found that Welch acted on a personal vendetta against Sloshler, and not for any legitimate security reason. Now the department has focused its attention on ensuring no more videos are leaked instead of ensuring that no more torture happens. Paul Slosher is lucky to be alive. The next Paul Slosher might not be so lucky. And I'll play you the video in a second. Yes! You're gonna let this go the way we're supposed to let it go? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 
says. Can you believe that? Doesn't that just blow your mind? I just can't. I can't even believe it happened. So they have him completely restrained. He's surrounded by guards. They take a high-powered pepper spray bottle that is designed to spray people where you're standing more than 20 feet away from them and he's only literally within maybe a foot and a half of his face and he unloads a short burst of pepper spray short burst right into his face his entire face goes from bright white to just orange like he looks like President Trump just completely orange there's pepper spray in his eyes, there's pepper spray up his nose, there's pepper spray in his mouth, in his ears. And then after they do that, they put, it's hard to make out in the video, I'm not sure they do it in this video, but um, they admit to putting a um, spit mask over him. So they put a spit mask over his face, which effectively traps in all that pepper spray. And he's yelling out, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And we, we know that there's examples where um, people die from that stuff. So what they did in this video, and we'll play it again here, is attempted murder. I just want to play it again because it's it's absolutely insane. Hey, watch my arm. I don't need you to touch my arm. Get off my head. Doesn't that just disgust you? I can't even believe that it, it happened. And the other examples we don't have on video because Maine has become so secretive now. And it, other states are not like this. Um, for instance, there was um, a recent shooting in Minot, Maine, where um, um, the police were called to do an alive, or a wellness check on a young man with mental, um, possibly mental um, illness. His mother, his mother, his mother calls the police and says, hey, can you go check out my son to make sure he's okay? I'm concerned about him. I'm concerned about him. Police show up and they kill the kid. They were wearing body cam footage because they're from uh, Androscoggin County, Maine. So they all had body camera footage on. There may have been dash cam footage. In all circumstances where there's body cam footage and dash cam footage, like for instance in the Rayshard Brooks case down in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or the Minneapolis officers um, out in uh, Minneapolis, um, on, those are two recent ones that come to mind. The dash cam footage and the body cam footage are released to the public immediately. The news agencies all have them. The public can watch and see what happened for themselves and form some immediate opinions um, on whether this is something that we need to be concerned about or not concerned about. I understand that there needs to be some privacy as far as some of the information um, to keep the integrity of the investigation alive, but the body cam footage and the dash cam footage should be released immediately. In Maine, that Minot shooting in Androscoggin County, they, as far as I know, they still have not released that footage, and it happened several months ago. So Maine is the secret state. It's, it's, <laughs> it's uh, the, there's... It's the cover-up state. Maine is the cover-up state. There's just no question about it. I'd like to give a shout out to the Maine Fusion Center, a secret Maine State Police Department set up in the wake of 9-11 to spy on terrorists, but now spy on anybody who's a little critical of the state of Maine. They have spied on me, they've spied on um, peaceful protesters, um, they spied on people that were against a power line going through Maine. They've spied on uh, Black Lives Matter protesters. And they are my most loyal fan. They've watched all my videos, read all my posts. So a big shout out to the Maine State Police Fusion Center. These videos do take a lot of time. I don't make money on them. So if you would not mind, go check out my website, um, nationalsi.com. And um, if you know 
anybody who does insurance fraud assignments, um, insurance adjusters, lawyers, um, please email me their contact information so that I can reach out to them. Um, I'm in the New England area. I'm licensed um, in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont. I work in Rhode Island, and also I'm, I'm down in the south, too, in Tennessee. Um, um, so any of those areas are are great. If you know people that are in the industry, please forward their information. It would be very, very helpful. Um, also, check out my store. Um, you can buy cool t-shirts and uh, mugs and different things that help support my work. I just want to get to the truth. That's my goal with every case, with every um, story that I do. And um, the truth and uncovering the truth is very important, no matter where it leads. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare place for you. And if I go and prepare place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also.